uh, this is the beginning of uh, the session of waves where I'm going to explain about the gunas and the importance of the gunas in uh, our life, uh, how it connects, especially with our cognition. Well, my name is uh, Dr. Pratibha Graman. I'm a mental health counselor and I do consultations. I'm also a uh, instructor of psychology and philosophy, and I've worked in uh, key positions in student affairs. Anybody can write me, please, patibagraman at gmail.com. Now, uh, to begin, uh, I'd like to explain the, the sameness or um, relationship of the three gunas with the three principles of physics. The three gunas talks about a light. Uh, let me read this. The characteristics and the operation of the cosmic principles, the mind, which is called antakarana, and the management of the mental gunas, and the strive that uh, for sattva, uh, which is an advantage and the reduction of tamasic, with the operation of rajasic that goes between the sattva and the tamasic. This is how the transformation occurs. Now, the three gunas, uh, some may know, some may not know. The sattva is uh, filled with uh, the revealing power and the pleasantness of life, the happiness of life, the life that everyone wants whether they can see it clearly or not. It is also the uh, principal guna that leads to consciousness because of the three gunas are nature. And then there is also consciousness, which is a different principle. Uh, the tamasic uh, and the sattva are actually um, stationary principles. It is the rajasic or the action that moves between the sattva and the tamasic. The tamasic is a very uh, dense energy in our life. In anything in um, our world that has a density is considered tamasic. And in psychologically, it brings dullness. No one really likes to be in the tamasic, but the tamasic is also very present. So to understand these, you can understand how uh, transformation is possible. Uh, again, uh, with physics, the physics that uh, are the three principles that are considered to be basic in physics are light, darkness, and kinetics. So you see how easily these three fit together. Sattva, satoguna means light. And so does, we have daylight, don't we? So it's an obvious thing to us in our life. Rajoguna, it means activity and it coordinates perfectly within physics. They use the word kinetics, which means any kind of movement, uh, which includes also um, within the cells, within the uh, microcosm and the, the molecules and all, there is movement and there is also movement everywhere in life. The tamoguna is um, uh, compared with uh, the density, as I mentioned, and inertia, uh, as is mentioned in physics. Now I'm referring to this in this, in this uh, context of Sankhya, Sankhya guna, uh, not Sankhya guna, but Sankhya philosophy, because Sankhya philosophy talks a lot about the gunas and they are considered here as or in other philosophies as well, but to be the substratum of the, of the life, substratum of the creation. And just what we've already mentioned, I've already mentioned about the Sattva Rajas Thomas, these are considered as the substratum. To describe it a little bit in history, uh, say 2,700 years ago, a person by the name of Kapil or Kapila is given credit for having written the Sankhya philosophy, the Sankhya cosmology, 
formed the basis also of the teachings that Gautam and the Buddha used. Sankhya further uh, describes these three gunas uh, as nature uh, or the word prakriti is used. And then there's another cosmic principle called purusha and it is the same as consciousness. So they're separate. This is the thing that is uh, uh, to be understood here. They are separate and they're e both eternal principles. They are eternal principles and they are the principle or maybe you can say the only eternal principles really in the highest form that there is. The uh, combination, so to speak, that makes nature a prakriti. So the three gunas are what really actually make up prakriti. There is nothing different. I mean, these are the larger words. Now, just to mention a little bit about how it works, but I'm not going deeply into this. So let's say you, you are a person who believes, uh, who lives with the idea that there is life and rebirth. Well, there is also final liberation. If you feel this way, then from innumerable births, um, then the individual soul uh, finally, or with one's own actions and intent and works on their, their soul, or, uh, they may come to cross the prakriti um, and into the consciousness permanently. This is what is meant by then there will be no more birth. So it is an experience beyond the mind that is, you could say, permitted by Prakriti after innumerable births. When the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, come to an equanimity and the soul is immersed into the light of Sattva. This could be a, a, another discussion. Now, uh, the way they flow together, this is what really makes life happen. At any particular time, we have, as we said, the satellite, jasic kinetics, tamasic density, one and the same, they continuously flow together in varying proportions. This is always the case. There is never uh, a unity of them while life is going on. There is always only this motion. There's the sattva at one end, so to speak, and the tamasic in between is the continual movement of the action. And you can see life this way, if you can reflect on it. The planets, trees, all forms of human, all forms of the human mind contain the same atoms and the molecules of nature's substratum. Now, the form itself determines the conscious intelligence of the form. So the consciousness, its role, it enlivens the material form. And that is the main thing that happens. So all the work has to be done by the material, by even oneself. It is the consciousness that one wishes, that prays for, uh, that enlivens but we have to do the work as we are part of uh, the nature. Now, in the mind, we call it antakarana. We have several things. We have the senses, which are called manas. We have intellect, which is called buddhi. And we have ego, which is called uh, ahankara. These are part of the mind that we all work with, that we all have. Now, in addition to these three, or as it works, there is a relationship to the gunas, right? This is the citta, this is the citta. Now the gunas flow unceasingly, cosmically, but they also flow in our mind, see? Because we are part of nature. We are part of prakriti. The flow of the gunas, themselves. This is where you can see yourself from. Effects our focus, our attention, our clarity, and all of the other aspects that are psychological and emotional. Uh, of course, this is just topical, but 
here. With will and intention, <clears throat> we as the human can manage the proportional influence of the gunas in our minds. And in this way, we ha can have transformation psychologically, emotionally, and all of the aspects that are related to our mind through our will and intention. These are the gunas that change. You may not think this way, but you can reflect on this. Now, once a little bit more, you see this um, braid has three strands, a red, a yellow, a blue. So let's just say the sattva is related to the yellow. Um, it could sometimes, some people use the red this way, but it's intel, it's our intelligibility in our mind. Huh? Now the sattva is the activity, so you might use the red for that. And then as I had explained before, the tamasic means inertia or dullness. So the uh, thing to understand or remember is that this flow never stops. It's continual as long as life goes on, as long as our planet goes on. This flow continues. It's And these three are always together. They are never separate. So at any one time, one of these uh, predominates, dominates, and the other two support. Let's just take an example. I'll say this first. The proportions continually change too. So within your mind, the gunas are coming through, but it's our mind like to hold on to something. Let's say um, you have a beautiful picture in your mind. Um, and um, uh, there's a beautiful picture on the wall and you are contemplating it, you're enjoying it. But uh, all of a sudden the lights go out then that picture in your mind or in the on the wall changes, right? Uh, there is always there is always change, even to the degree, let's say you are feeling love about something or someone. But moment to moment, there's a little tiny bit of differences. Even they're indiscernible. It's just that life is like that. So we have to, in our mind, want to stay toward the tama, uh, toward the sattva and the uh, rajasic together, and not fall into the and the deep pool of tamasic. Let's say there's a lot of oversleeping that uh, you are experiencing. There's a lot of dullness. You think you're going to be so sharp when you uh, wake up, even though you've, ha you've had such a good sleep, it's too much. If it's too much, then you have a dullness in your mind, don't you? It's not as sharp as you thought it would be. So there is a lot to consider in proportions of the way these gunas work cosmically, but in our minds, we need to look at them in our life. So the Rajasic is really the transformational agent because it continually pulls between sattva and tamas. And everybody, whether they can contemplate, wants the sattva, this is where you have a pleasant life, you have happiness, you have sharpness, and life is, is a good. Now, um, more about transformation. Well, it is the outcome of the psychophysiological process when sattva is dominant and the rajas support each other. The best aspect that the tamasic has is a stability, right? Because there's more lightness in the um, sattva but there's uh, easily too much heaviness and density and dullness and all the things that we, and depression. Depression is, if it's, um, is definitely a dominance of the, um, of the tamasic, right? What do you have to do to get out of that? You have to increase the sattva by a new intention, new things that you want to do, 
even helpfulness is a great idea that in its action moves away from the clinginess that results in the tamasic and it increases the sattva. So in this case, the reduction of pain occurs and the increase of happiness and a closer relationship with the other uh, principle, consciousness, the enlivening principle of consciousness, there is a closer relationship when the sattva is highest. So I made a, another example here of the sleep. It's tamasic by nature, but it can be dominated by also in a complex way. There are three ways you can have different kinds of sleep. I have it here. If it's dominated by sattva, you will get a deep sleep uh, and you will feel good when you awaken, like you have a good restful sleep. But if the sleep, even though, I mean, uh, um, of itself, it is a tamasic act. If it's dominated by rajas, you're going to get up in the morning feeling restless and agitated. And you have a lot of unwanted thoughts and emotions. Uh, you will also feel more tired, unrested. The sleep that was dominated by tamasic is going to leave you even worse feeling. You really feel drugged and overtired, exhausted, and you just don't want to do anything except get more and more sleep. So you can see how these things move as an example. And tamasic um, is not your friend. <laughs> it's the sattva that your friend Here's a, just a little joke. Sattva means balance, harmony, positive uh, in general, peace, clarity, rajasic, movement, activity, energy, excitement, passion. When rajasic is uh, in the lead, there will not be focus. It is like un, uncontrolled, un, unattention. It's, it's not working with attention at all. It just moving tamasic dominance inertia inactivity negative apathy dullness so each of these are when the one of them is dominant the other two support because they always work together but the dominance is the one that you need to look at so here are a few more qualities can you say how many minutes i should have to, left to talk uh, well I think these are mostly uh, mentioned earlier. Satoguna is light, intelligible, pleasantry, has attention, concentration, happiness, clarity, light and lightness, related qualities and virtues. The Rajasic is an active force. And so it's always activity of different kinds. Pranayama is also an action. And adding pranayama is excellent because it immediately works for transformation and uh, it builds up your energy. Uh, change agents uh, between satoguna and tamoguna um, is what happens here. And then, then there's the magnetic pole between the sattva and tamasic. Sattva and Rajas combine well to make clarity and happiness and inspiration. This combination leads to a desire and an opportunity to know more about ultimate truth and enlightenment. And the Tamaguna is characterized by density, inertia, mass structures or tamasic predominant, indifference, confusion, doubt, laziness, sleep, mental rumination, can't stop the uh, thoughts. Addictions, clinging attachment, psychological things that are all bothersome and uh, depressing belong in the Tamoguna. Appropriateness and discernibility is required to change the Tamasic qualities. Well, thank you very much. And these are a few references, um, oh, which in some of mine I did uh, for dissertation of pranayam breath uh, experiment with persons. And the, James Larson is a wonderful uh, 
read for reading about Sankhya. Here is the book that's really beautiful. Handbook of Indian Psychology. Um, oh, oh, this is what I mean by uh, Swami. Um, Ishwara Krishna, Virpaksananda. Okay, right. The Sankhya Karika of Ishwara Krishna. Uh, the Sankhya Karika is what you can call it. Sankhya Karika of Ishwara Krishna. This, was, this is a wonderful, wonderful small book to read. And I thank you. I hope you enjoyed and uh, be in, very happy to uh, communicate if you want to uh, be in touch with my email.